there, folks. Welcome back to Rule of Thumb. Today, I'm bringing you along for another cookbook corner, as I promised in the last video. And the cookbook that I'm doing today is something a little different. It's not something, you know, I find a lot of cookbooks out of state sales or, um, you know, going to a bookstore and finding something that's a newer contemporary cookbook. The last one was one that I came across because of um, seeing it on all sorts. This cookbook I actually came across on Facebook because I came across somebody who was posting on Facebook that I really liked. And the, um, I guess, I don't know what it's called on Facebook. What is it called? It's not a channel. Page. There we go. The page on Facebook that I really liked is called Polish Housewife. Now, I grew up uh, in a very small town in northeastern Wisconsin, and uh, it was predominantly Polish and German. Um, I would say 90% or better of the people that lived there were Polish or German. So a lot of these recipes that I was seeing on this page were things that I remembered from my childhood um, and remembered seeing at potlucks and, you know, all those kind of things. So I was watching the page, and then um, I saw when I followed her page that she also had a cookbook, and I just, I knew it was going to be something that I was going to like, and um, I just went for it. So I ordered this book, and this is what it looks like. And it is called The Polish Housewife Cookbook, Traditional Recipes You Wish Your Polish grandmother had written down, um, and the author is Lois Britton, um, and it was an Indie Excellent Book Awards finalist. Now, I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> one of the th first things that I love is it's spiral bound, um, because a spiral bound cookbook is much easier to use, because you can lay it out flat, um, and you aren't always trying to hold your book open. The second thing I'll tell you about this book, it is beautifully done with really nice heavy paper um, and the photography in it is gorgeous okay like check this out I mean let's see you know even like something as simple as bread okay like it's just just beautifully here's like sausages I mean, I just think the photography in here is really spectacular. The book is really, really beautifully done. So, we're just going to go through it here. I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, each chapter. Um, this was written in 2019, um, so this is new. Um, and I just, I can't, you know, I can't recommend this book enough. So... Um, she does a nice introduction, and, um, <laughs> this is interesting. She has a page here, Polish, Polish pronunciation. Readers often ask for the proper pronunciation of Polish recipe titles. Excuse me while well, my cat is over here. This is the newest member of our cat family. This is Archie. And he loves to make noise and loves to be a nuisance. So, I'm sorry. Um, I'll off, uh, so, she, she says, people always ask for the pronunciation. She says, I'll offer the following very basic guide to help you in sounding out Polish words. The accent is always on the next to last syllable. And when in doubt, you can always type a word in Google Translate and click on the speaker icon to hear the word pronounced. It's not perfect, but it helps. Um, so she goes on to show you, like, an A is like the A in ball. C is like the T-S in cats. E is like the E in bet. You know, so she kind of gives you a breakdown. So I thought that was kind of a, just a cool little add-on thing. Nothing to do with cooking, but cool. Um, all right, so the first chapter... <clears throat> Actually, let me run through what the chapters are here. So there is soups, breads, pierogi, 
main dishes, side dishes, desserts, and beverages. All right. So the first one is soups, um, and it includes chilled creamy beet soup. So that's like a uh, cold uh, borscht. Um, potato soup, chicken noodle soup, dill pickle soup. Mm. Y'all know I love me some dill pickles. Dill pickle soup, yes please. Cauliflower soup, spicy beet broth, tripe soup. Uh, tripe might be out of my comfort zone, but cool that it's in there. Sour rye soup, sour kraut soup, and tomato soup. Um, sour kraut soup, not gonna happen. And mom, if you're out there watching this, sauerkraut is still not something I love. <laughs> My mom was commenting to me the other day that there's so many things that I eat now that I would never have eaten when I was a kid, which is true. Sauerkraut, still on the list of things I'm not going to eat. So. <laughs> um, so that's soups. Let's see where we go from there. Um, this sour rye soup, though, that just, I don't know, it's so interesting because... You make like a sour liquid with rye flour, crust from a slice of rye bread, water, garlic, bay leaves, and allspice berries. <laughs> this is so interesting. I can't wait to really get into this. All right. The next chapter is breads. Um, and under breads, she has bread rolls, sourdough rye. Okay. You know, I've been trying to learn to do sourdough thanks to my friend Heather and I actually have a rye sourdough starter which I need to do more with so um, rye onion bread blueberry buns Krakow pretzels white bread potato bread and a braided egg bread uh, which in Polish I guess is halka which must be the equivalent of hala for um, what those of us in the Jewish community make for um, the Sabbath on Fridays. So that is breads. Then we go into pierogi. Okay, uh, pierogi are Polish filled dumplings. Now if you look at food across the world, almost every type of food, uh, you know, Asian, Indian, you name it. Almost every type of food has some sort of a filled dumpling. This is the Polish version. Um, so she takes you through how to make the traditional pierogi dough, which is an art. It is an absolute art form. Um, and then she also has a baked pierogi dough, which is a yeast dough which will be really interesting. And then she goes into some different fillings. So a pork pierogi, a potato and cheese, a spinach, a cabbage and mushroom, mixed berry pierogi, hmm, and strawberry pierogi. So a whole chapter just on that. And this is something that, you know, I can remember growing up. I can remember the women in our community making these and sharing them, you know, because they would make hundreds of them at a time and then they would share them with others so very memorable thing for me all right so next chapter is main dishes um and in that chapter there is goulash which is a very uh polish thing hunter stew cabbage rolls pork cutlet pork rolls and smoked polish sausage so, um, let's see, hunter's stew, pork beef, salt and pepper, olive oil, onions, bacon, beef broth, mushrooms, sauerkraut, apples, pitted prunes, diced tomatoes, caraway, Polish sausage. I mean, this is like serious business. Again, minus the sauerkraut. Cabbage rolls, definitely. That, that is something, when I was a kid, I would not have eaten. So, but I would eat that now. Um, you know, and again, this is like, so like I talked about in the last book, sometimes there's recipes that I wouldn't necessarily make because it's pork, but could I substitute something? So here's a perfect example. The pork cutlet. I could easily do that with chicken or a pounded out uh, turkey breast and make like a turkey cutlet. 
So there's options there that I could use the same recipe, but adapt it. Um, let's see here. What's interesting is the smoked Polish sausage recipe is a real, you know, true sausage recipe, including um, casing them. So it's really interesting. That, of course, is a pork-based recipe, but um, I have been kicking around the idea and doing some research on trying to make a chicken and or, excuse me, turkey version of Polish sausage. Um, so something I'm still working on. Then we go into side dishes. Uh, potato pancakes, I remember having those when I was a kid all the time. Um, cabbage salad, red cabbage, cucumbers and sour cream, something I totally remember from my childhood. Um, potato salad, sour pickles, sauerkraut obviously, lard spread, and potato dumplings, and beet salad. So, I mean, look at these potato pancakes and tell me you don't want to like get up and go and make these right now. I mean, forget about it. They, they look delicious. Um, cabbage salad looks like a Polish version of coleslaw. So, a head of, one small head of cabbage, juice of a lemon, salt, apple, dill seed, garlic powder, powdered sugar, vegetable oil, and carrot. Very interesting. This uh, this could be. There's a restaurant that I go to when I go um, when Josh and I go up and we visit with Heather and Matt at the Needy Homesteader. They take us to this restaurant called Iva's, uh, where they do a fried chicken dinner and it's like served family style. And one of the things that they serve is a coleslaw that is not a. Um, Miracle Whip or mayonnaise based uh, coleslaw. It's a vinegar based coleslaw. Um, and this looks like it might be kind of on the order of that, but it doesn't have vinegar. So it really, well, it has the lemon. So this would be interesting. This might be something interesting. I'll have to pass this recipe on to Heather and so that she can try it and see what she thinks. Um, Cucumbers and sour cream. Again, it's cucumbers, sour cream, vinegar, chives, dill, sugar, salt, and pepper. I mean, it is so simple, but one of the best side dishes. I haven't made it in forever, and I totally need to make it. Oh, I mean, this book is really, it's really fantastic. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, okay, then we get into desserts. Uh, gingerbread cookies, gingerbread cake, rhubarb crumb cake, definitely on my list, apple pie, a poppy seed roll, um, which I believe is the picture here, which is really cool, um, apple fritters, St. Martin's croissants, crepes with cheese filling. Mm. Oh, look at this rhubarb crumb cake. I mean, really? Who doesn't want that for dessert? Or breakfast? Or lunch? <laughs> um, apple pie. Yeah, that was the poppy seed roll that I showed you. Apple fritters. Um, God, just, I mean, there's so many good things in here. Beverages. It's just tea, fruit punch, mulled wine, cherry vodka, and honey and spiced vodka. So kind of infusions. Um... Let's see what her tea is. Uh, loose leaf tea, boiling water. So it's just kind of a... Oh, and then she gives you some optional add-ins. Some things to kind of, you know, spruce up your tea. So mint, lemon balm, dried apple peel, raspberries, dried rose hips, grated ginger, jam. So that's kind of cool. Um, cherry vodka... So she's infusing the vodka with pitted cherries and sugar. And the other one, the honey spice, is honey, cloves, cinnamon stick, zest of a lemon, vanilla bean pod, 
allspice berry. Hmm, very interesting. So, that is the book. Again, this is what it looks like. Um, I will link the Facebook page um, in the description box below. Um, if you go to her Facebook page, you can order the cookbook directly from her Facebook page. This is not a sponsored video. I purchased this book with my own money. Um, she doesn't even know who I am. I mean, other than, you know, I'm a subscriber to her Facebook page. So she may know my name from there, but she has no idea that I'm doing this. This, this wasn't a pre-planned thing. I just, I got the book. I absolutely loved it. It is beautifully done. It is so well put together. It's, in my opinion, worth every penny. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was $25. I'm, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And it, Like I said, I, in my opinion, worth it. Um, so, go check it out. Check out the page, if nothing else. I, I, I mean, just the Facebook page alone is, is fun and just cool things coming across there. So, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below, um, tell me what other things you'd like to see. I hope you had a great day. Come back and see us soon. And as always, did I say that already? As always, I hope you have a great day.